we know there's been a huge growth in community and grassroots initiatives and organizations set up to help their local communities over the pandemic. Um, they obviously have an access to those kind of excluded communities we're aiming to serve. So how do we engage with this emerging ground level resource? Um, I'm going to uh, get Nathan just to give an overview of the Law Centres Network work and then quickly over to Lindsay um, after that to talk about um, a research project that they've got that ongoing. Uh, but you've got 10 minutes between you, two, you both. So first of all, Nathan. Uh Oh, sorry, pop up asking me to unmute myself. Um, hopefully you can hear me now. Yeah, yeah great. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. I'll try and be nice and quick. So it's a really complicated question or a simple question with a complicated answer, I think. Um, the simple answer is that reaching out to uh, a variety of different communities and community organisations is incredibly helpful. Um, the great thing about the, if I can say it this way, one of the benefits of, of this pandemic and of the lockdown and uh, of, of what's had to happen over the past year is the space to really consider how linked local law centres have been with their communities and to do mapping exercises, to reach out to, to their local communities, to try and recreate uh, links and also um, find links that, that couldn't have existed before with organisations such as um, you know, it's sort of very response-based organisations. So direct, um, direct help, direct support. Uh, there's, there's lots of uh, mutual aid is the word I'm looking for there, the phrase I'm looking for, organisations that have set up during this time to really support their local areas and communities. Um, something I'm always keen when I talk about this sort of uh, issue to, to say is that community uh, doesn't really exist. And we're really talking about lots and lots of communities, some of which are, are transient and people are only part of for the time in which they actually have that legal issue or that that uh, real difficulty um, and and so really it's it's got to be a much more sort of holistic and uh, complex look at who you're reaching at any particular point. Um, so we have done in over the last sort of six months in, in LCN we have had a project going on about uh, communities about reaching out to communities what we decided, the tack that we decided to take in, uh, in this particular project was to help upskill law centres to do their own work in this area. Uh, it was what with the amount of time we had and the resource we had, it was not something that we felt as LCN we could go and just do for people. But what we were really, really keen to do is to uh, give law centres the space and the, the spaces and the training and the ability to think about this in a, in a useful way. Uh, and there's lots and lots of work that's come out of that that I'm very excited about. Um, and uh, I could, with, with more time, talk in much more detail about that. Um, but sim simply, it has been really useful. It has sort of helped, uh, as I said, sort of create spaces for new referrals, for second tier advice across different uh, law centres. The other thing I, I did briefly want to sort of bring up about the, uh, the idea of digital exclusion as it relates to this. We don't know yet how much uh, the work that we've done and the work that's been being done over the past few months um, has enabled the digital the digitally excluded to access advice. Because again, it's a very, very complex question. I would be uh, lying if I was said to you, I had a simple answer to it. What I will say is that I think there is a really interesting interplay with the demographic shift that lots of advice um, organizations have seen over the past uh, year not only in that uh, people have not been able to access advice because they are in, in, in some, some degree or some definition of digitally excluded, but also because lots of the legal needs within communities have changed. Um, we talk, you know, the stay on evictions meant that people being evicted were not being evicted and did not need that same advice that they used to have. Similarly, many benefits assessments were not taking place. And so the, uh, the sort of, um, conveyor belt of that kind of casework stopped uh, or was interrupted. Um, on the other hand, employment law, as we all know, shot up. Family law inquiries, as we know, shot up. Lots and lots of other types of inquiries and other communities that, again, had not existed until the pandemic were created by the circumstances of the pandemic, by the material circumstances of the pandemic. And so a big um, question for law centres and for LCN and for our organisations in general, I think, has been how do we 
find, identify, reach out to those communities and what should our relationship look like with them because some of them aren't even aware that they're communities yet. So, sorry, I've thrown a lot of um, sort of quite complex um, uh, sort of questions and, and not a huge amount of answers, I'm afraid, but it's it's been a really, really interesting project. There'll definitely be more that we can share with you once we've been able to sort of review our findings in more detail from, from the work we've been doing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, there's, I think, the last point I'd like to make, and I'm sure if, if people have sort of questions or anything, I'd, I'd love to talk more about this either in, in individually or in other groups, but that one of the biggest hurdles from everything we've been hearing from, from our advisors um, and from communities, one of the biggest hurdles is the first step to get advice. Advisors tend to be very, very good at problem solving once they're in contact with a client. I have heard anecdotally stories about people cycling around to deliver things or having, um, you know, uh, socially distant advice meetings in car parks and in all sorts of various things that have happened across this time. That's problem solving once we know that a client exists and once we know that that client's issue exists and have taken it on and taken responsibility for it. The biggest issue for uh, exclusion is about making that first step and so that's where being a you know thinking about the other people who can support someone to make that step and and, and again figuring out ways of, of reaching them and of, of um, even you know, legally uh, educating them on, on what a problem even looks like so that they can help people has it, been a, a big piece of work that we've been doing. So I'll, I'll draw it to a close there. Hopefully I've kept the time well enough and someone else can, can speak, but thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about this.